Yeah, Avi, I appreciate that. Um, you know, interestingly enough, there's a lot of people in the first year here tonight that I've had a lot to do with over the years. Uh, and, and as Alan said, I'm pretty good at finding a go between, aren't I, Alan? Barbara was pretty good, wasn't she? She got me there, but the mistake was, Barbara, I didn't ask you for his vote, right? So that's what I needed to do next time. But, uh, but and, you know, and the other thing I'll say, Alan's got one of the best offices I've ever been in. If you go to his office, you get to see memorabilia that's second to none, and not, it's, it's an experience to go, to go over to his office. But let, let me tell you a couple of stories that make you a little bit about my background. I work for Governor John Y. Brown, okay? You've heard John talk already, right? And much like, uh, much like Terry said, you know, if you work for one of these two, two birds, I'll tell you, you're going to work hard, okay? Because if they're working that hard, you're going to be working that hard. And, um, but the interesting part about that one was, John is a nightlife guy. I don't know how many of you spent much time around John over the years, but I used to have the pleasure of ending my day with John and beginning my day with W.T. Young. Now, I have to tell you, that's a 20-hour day. By anybody's st standard, and Bo, you know that's right, Boo. It's a 20-hour day, right? You know that. You've seen it for years, right? So one morning, I finally said, as, 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 as WT would start the legislative session every morning with him chairing it and me running it, I finally said to him one day after about a week, I said, you know, I don't know if I can take this. This, this is just getting four hours sleep a night. It's about to run me in the ground. And uh, Bill looked over me, sort of chuckled, said, man, you're a young man. Are you kidding? When I was your age, I could stay up all night. He said, but you got to get another plan. So I said, okay, I will. So I went over and talked to the security. I said, look, I want to move in that bedroom up on the mansion on the Capitol floor because I'm tired of driving to Lexington back and forth every day. And remember that, I lived there for a month. And I lived there for a month as we finished the legislative session. Well, a couple things happened as a result of all that. I spent the next four years with, with John White and, and with uh, Bill Young and many other Cabinet secretaries who were entrepreneurs. Frank Metz was an entrepreneur. Gene Smith, who I was a partner with. I mean, we were full of them. We, were, we had so many entrepreneurs up there, Terry. You could have run your company or anybody else's company with the crew that we had, right? And we got a lot of things done. And, and I, I can assure you that watching how we managed money and managed budgets, we didn't have an unfunded pension plan we left. And that hadn't been very long ago. And now it's about 35 billion plus, which is about a billion a year they keep tacking on. But this is what came with what, what created my opportunity. I wasn't necessarily driven to be an entrepreneur. I didn't come, I, I was, I was uh, studying to be a lawyer, studied to, studied to, I was a CPA. Alan, then I, then I went to law school at night, which gave me a lot of backgrounds. But government was the finishing touch because if you work those kind of hours for two guys like that, the one thing I decided at the end of the legislative session, if I ever get out of here, I'll never work for anybody else again. Right now. <laughs> and so, so the last paycheck I ever got from a boss was from uh, John Y. Brown. And I will tell you that he talked about the Harvard story. I have to say this because it's, it's just too good. We used to travel, and I was Secretary of Commerce, and we go places, and he'd go in and tell that story every place he'd go. Well, by about halfway through the day, I said, John, just step aside. You rest a little bit. I'll tell it this time. And I would just you know, when Governor Brown, when he went up to see Harvard, then I went through the whole story, and I hit it down pat. He could, he, could, he could speak it, and I knew every word that was coming next, so I could do it just as well as he did. And finally, I said, you know, we're getting pretty good at this. Why don't you just move the lips, and I'll talk, <laughs> and you can save your voice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard to get up and, and tell, tell you in five, ten minutes what's like being off the floor, because they are, they're all kind of all custom-created. They're all different. And, you know, uh, Ron Geary and I were roommates in college. We were roommates for three years, 30 brothers. We go pretty far back. Uh, I know a lot on him I'm not allowed to tell. Uh, it's, it, he's told everything about me, so it doesn't make any difference. I'm much more of a gentleman about that. But, uh, but you know, you, you start out with people you get to know, and it is about the people you surround yourself with. And, and I've been very lucky in my life. I've got a few of them here tonight. You know, Mary, Mary uh, Ewing, who many of you have known over the years, she's been with me 24 years. And uh, I've told her that I've given her the ultimate job security. She's the executive of my state because if anybody's ever gonna write a book about me, she's the one I don't wanna have write the book. Because okay? she knows everything. So it's, it's good not to have that. But you know, it's, it's hard to tell you exactly what makes a business go, what makes a business work. You know, uh, just a couple little side lights to this. You know, you saw that I've done a little dabbling in the movie business with my partner, Ed Hart. And one of the stories that he loves to tell, that we talk about, and kid about, 
when, when Sony Productions was bought by the Japanese, they were trying to learn the business. And of course, we set up the Tokyo office, and you get to know, just like with Lloyd Weston, as John talked about, they're very, they, they, they study everything. And they study it, and they study it, they study it, because they're trained that way. They're students of business. And they learned a lot from the good companies of America what to do, and they learned a lot from bad companies what not to do. So the, the, the guy that they hired to run Sony Productions had been there for a long time. He said, well, let me tell you a little bit about our company. He said, we usually do about 25 to 30 movies a year. And we probably have an average cost of about 100 to 200 million per movie. And if you're lucky, six of those movies will turn out to be pretty good, and you'll make some substantial money. So the one, the one, the one little uh, executive with the Japanese company raised his hand. He stood up and he said, uh, "Well, how can we just make those six movies? We don't need to make the other 24." <laughs> and that's the kind of questions that entrepreneurs get asked all the time. That's the kind of questions I used to ask, you know. And I, I would I'd, I'd try to get somebody to explain things to me. And we all have our own systems. Everybody has their own systems, but it's all to get to the finish, to get to the bottom line, to make it work. You know, I was on Ron's board, Ron was on my board. A lot of us have watched each other's style. I tried to learn a lot. Of, I think I learned a lot from John. I learned a lot from Bill Young. And, you know, I, I, there are little things in life that I tried, I tried to emulate and copy, you know. And um, probably the one thing that, that's, that's difficult, and, you know, my daughter's here tonight, and I think Terry would say the same thing. It's hard to work that hard and be at home all the time when you need to be. It's just hard because you're, you're, you're somewhere else. Maybe it's some of the most crucial times, and I think about that often. If there's anything I ever feel guilty about, that's probably the one I feel the guiltiest about. Because, as you said, it, it, it's an important thing to do to run a company because it's not just like raising your, you know, like in my case, three daughters. You're, you're responsible for a lot of people. In, in our company, we at one point were responsible for 65,000 people, which means you've got 65,000 plus their families and whatever. And that's a, that's a responsibility I always try to carry, and sometime to a fault. And over the years, but I've learned that it comes back to you. It comes back to you from their kids, from even at this stage of my life, their grandkids, who remember days, remember family picnics, remember the things you did. And I go, you know, maybe it was worth it. It might have been worth it for that reason. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a trait. It's a trait that's hard to do, but to simplify things. It's something I always tried to do. I tried to have simple thoughts, simple ideas, because you had a lot of people you were saying things to. And I used to have little sayings like, you move with a mission on your mind. I don't care if you're just going to the bathroom, get there and get back. Because you can't, you only have so much time allocated to you a day. And you see a lot of people who work hard. And I, and I used to say, if you see somebody strolling down the hall, they're a visitor. They're not working here. Because people enjoyed it. They understood it. They knew when they came to work, and went to sit around and, and eat donuts, drink coffee, not because we were slave drivers, because everybody was busy. We were growing so fast that if somebody didn't do their job, everybody else was backed up. And that's what I thought was really important. And it, it, you, you know, you could either, you know, as they say, make dust or eat dust, and you've really got to work, and you've got to work hard. But a simple story, and I, and I do like these, and if we're out across here, this is one of my favorites. Uh, Jim Murray was a columnist at one point was a columnist in 100 newspapers in the country. Now today you couldn't find 100 newspapers. That shows you how that's changed. There aren't 100 daily newspapers in the country. Oh, yeah. and we, and we, and, no. Well, not 100 <laughs> daily newspapers of any size. Okay? He had all the size, right? But he, he wrote a line once that, that, that was one of my favorites. <clears throat> Some of you are old enough to remember boxing. I've always been a big boxing fan. I enjoy boxing. But the, but the biggest upset in my life was Buster Douglas knocking out Mike Tyson. I don't think I ever saw one bigger. And here's why. Tyson was so ferocious that he'd get in the ring and everybody would be scared to death of him, and they'd almost lay down in the first ring. <laughs> and he fought, he fought for, he fought, you know, five, six, seven fights, never got beyond the first round. Now, I knew a couple of the guys that were investors in Buster Douglas, and they told me he was going to win the fight. And I'm, and I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, that's impossible. There's no way he won't even stay in the ring when he gets in. Well, they had a game plan that if they could keep Tyson in the ring for four rounds, he'd be so tired that Buster could knock him out. And Buster was a journeyman boxer who's probably been hit so many times 
he could probably one thing he could do is take a punch, right? So he did that, and if you remember the fight, Tyson was so tired at the final point of the fight that he, he could have blown him over with a feather. Well, that set the whole world back on their heels, right? Well, when Buster had to fight as a champion, his first fight was with Evander Holyfield. Now, if you remember Evander Holyfield, he, he might have been the best physique of any boxer that ever lived. And Buster lived from the time he won the championship till he had the fight as if there wasn't enough food and enough drink to get in his system. <laughs> so Jim Murray, who could always write a paragraph or a sentence that would clearly explain what it looked like, he said when he looked up, he said Evander Holyfield looked like a Greek god. And Buster Douglas looked like a Greek restaurant. <laughs> and, and I tell you that because big businesses are caught by entrepreneurs. Because entrepreneurs are home, like by the whole field. They're hungry, they got drive, and they want to get there. And I have never learned how to do anything without hard work. But more importantly, I've never learned how to do anything without good people around me. And the horse business has to say that you keep yourself in the best company you can and keep your horses in the worst company you can. And that's how I've tried to live my life. I've been very fortunate. I've had great mentors like John W.T. I've had great friends like the group that are here tonight. And I've had great people that work for me, many of which today run companies themselves. And more importantly, I'm very proud to say, when people ask me, what were you in your life? I'm very proud to say I was an entrepreneur. And I hope someday many of you get to experience that, because it's a great pleasure. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.